a harje. Ta luhar wararam falcha a har rov and shaw, kadera kalam kilia, mas firud hain and vanak. As provost of Ulster University's McGee campus and professor of Irish, it is my pleasure to welcome you all to the 2021 American Conference for Irish Studies, broadcast live from this historic city of Derry. While COVID restrictions have prevented delegates from traveling to the city, Ulster University, in partnership with the John and Pat Hume Foundation, will seek in the coming days to bring a sense of Ireland's Northwest to you. 1,500 years after the birth of our region's patron, Derry is a fitting backdrop to this multinational colloquium, which will recognize and celebrate Colum Kill as one of the most influential figures in Irish and British history and a huge influence on our political, diplomatic, cultural, scientific and religious past. The National ACIS Conference provides the academic ballast to a year-long citywide educational and tourism program that showcases the Columban story and its place in regenerating the city and its hinterland. In preparing for the conference, I was struck by a fascinating excerpt from Richard Sharp's edition of St. Eunan's Vitae Columbae, The Life of Column Kill, in which he spoke of Column Kill's parishioners, predicting a huge turnout of pilgrims to mourn the saint when he died. Hearing this, Column Kill himself foresaw that it would not be as they had imagined. He observed, When the time comes, it will prove not to be as you say. The men and women of the lay population will not be able to come to my funeral at all. Only the monks of my own community will carry out my burial and perform the funeral duties. Colum Kill's prophecy was fulfilled. When inclement weather prevented any lay people rowing to Iona for the funeral, with the rains and the storm only abating after his burial. It is remarkable, therefore, that history has repeated itself and a global pandemic has this time prevented a physical gathering to honour him. After the challenging year we have, ha we have all had, it is gratifying and normalising to launch this virtual conference as a clear manifestation of the most important things that we as scholars do, present knowledge in our various fields of research and discuss our findings with colleagues from around the world. I am delighted to welcome academics from 110 different institutions across the world to this global conversation. While Colum Kill was a huge part of our past, our present and indeed our future has been shaped by Professor John Hume, Nobel laureate, a Gandhi Peace Prize recipient, and winner of the Martin Luther King Award. As a Derry native, this city had a major influence on his emergence as one of, as one of the great critical thinkers of modern Ireland. During the course of the next few days, the conference will celebrate John's philosophy of healing and steadfast commitment to peace and reconciliation and his enduring legacy in a city which now gives young people a brighter, non-violent future. Pro Pro Professor Hume's ties with America, nurtured by his alliances with former Speaker of the House of Representatives, Thomas Tip P. O'Neill, played a pivotal role in the peace process, and together they became a major force for enlisting the United States in advancing the peace process here. From 2002 until 2009, John Hume, in his honorary capacity as Tip O'Neill Chair in Peace Studies at Ulster, brought an unparalleled group of international figures. Among them, President Bill Clinton, Secretary Hillary Clinton, and Secretary John Kerry, to this very campus to lecture on peace, lessons to be learned, humanitarian assistance, and social development. Since then, through the award of honorary degrees, we have acknowledged the support of US leaders from across the political spectrum, business and the knowledge economy, who have contributed much to the growth and development of this region. Just two years ago, the current Speaker of the House of Representatives visited our campus when Congressman Richard Neal was awarded an honorary degree for his outstanding contribution to peace and conflict resolution across the island of Ireland. 
these enduring Irish-American connections will be a reoccurring focus throughout the next few days. While our political, cultural, and social ties with America clearly remain strong, our academic bonds have been consolidated through our collaboration with the American Conference for Irish Studies and our shared passion for supporting the expansion of Irish studies and all aspects of society, culture, and literature of Ireland and the Irish diaspora. In this recently designated UNESCO Learning City, we are all too aware of the impact of conflict and the need for education to enhance our understanding of the world around us, provide us with more and better opportunities, and improve our quality of life. As humanities scholars, we have a key role to play in preserving those great accomplishments of the past, helping us understand the world we live in and giving us tools to reimagine the future. The overarching conference themes of heritage, healing, and home act as a pathway for these times. Time for reflection, sense-making, and collective restoration is needed more than ever as we emerge from our homes and embrace our heritage and roots like never before, seeking healing and recovery that goes beyond the economic and transactional. The hosting, if only virtually, of this post-Brexit forum some three miles from the UK-EU international frontier is an opportunity to reflect on aspects of global diversity and equality in the tradition of Hume. In the coming days, our wide-ranging panel discussions will tackle historic and current aspects of heritage, healing, and home, with contributions from President Higgins, Congressman Brendan Boyle, and both the UK and Irish ambassadors to the US, Dame Karen Pierce and Dan Mulhall, with contributions from Philip Maker, Morris Fitzpatrick, responsible for John Human America, the Boys of St. Columns, and many others, and journalist Suzanne Mackay, presenting her new work on Northern Protestants, and indeed a preview of the new digitized edition of the famed manuscript, The Cahach of Colum Kilia. In the weeks after the loss of another of the region's literary giants, Seamus Dean's contribution to the Irish canon will feature alongside new examinations of Heaney, Freel, and a great many others. We will each represent our discrete interests as we interact over the next few days. Together with colleagues, I will be delighted to showcase outputs from our Irish and Celtic Studies Research Centre, which is regarded as being at the forefront of Celtic Studies research internationally, and our graduate Irish programmes, which play a vital role in preserving, sustaining and celebrating Ireland's Gaelic literary and linguistic heritage. What will be most valuable, through, though, will be the opportunity to hear from others, share experiences, and enrich our intellectual horizon. When we started enthusiastically planning this conference at the beginning of 2020, we had no idea how our world would be transformed. Over the past year, the conference team in the US and Ireland, supported by Abbey Events, has had to be agile in responding to ever-changing plans. I have been impressed by their determination, motivation, and inspiration in harnessing the outcomes of a myriad of conversations into an exciting conference program. Together, we have created a virtual reality. My sincere thanks to the whole team for your work in making ACES 2021 happen here and from Derry. It's my pleasure to formally open this national conference and wish you many fruitful and rewarding discussions in the hope that the technology will, of course, cooperate over the course of the next few days. Gurumila Moyagov. Hello, I'm Professor Paul Bartholomew, Vice-Chancellor and President of Ulster University. As many of you know, the American Conference for Irish Studies has been conducting national meetings annually since 1963. And every fourth year, delegates gather together in an overseas location, and I'm delighted this year to welcome you virtually to Ulster University's McGee campus in Derry, Londonderry, a city and region which has recently acquired new status as a UNESCO learning city. 
I am indeed most grateful to all of the distinguished panellists and delegates from near and far for taking time to participate. And while our current experiences pose challenges, they are also a stark reminder that creative and resourceful academic collaboration remains feasible and has the power to reimagine the world of academia in the years ahead. This International Congress is one of the foremost gatherings of scholars researching the languages, literature and cultural traditions of the Celtic-speaking peoples. It provides a forum in which experts from across the full range of Celtic studies come together to share the fruits of their work. This year, the focus is on the central themes of heritage, healing and home, and it will enable discussion and debate on the fascinating history, politics, literature, people and reconciliation lessons of Ireland from ancient times to present day. Humanities education and research has been a critical foundation of our university here at Ulster University for the past 150 years and disciplines such as history, languages and literature have shaped our institution and attracted generations of students seeking to understand more about how societies function and change. Developed on the principles of open exchange of information and transnational learning, I'm delighted that our School of Arts, Humanities and Social Sciences is spearheading this conference as we join other stakeholders across the city and wider region in marking 1500 years since the birth of Colin Kell. His legacy as a scholar and international statesman speaks of progression, collaboration, growth and scholastic achievement. As the linchpin of higher education in the city and a research intensive university, our academics are using their intersectoral international and intercommunity networks to authoritatively enrich the global discourse on one of this region's most important and celebrated sons. I pay tribute to the conference organising committee led for Ulster by Professor Malachy O'Neill and I'd like to thank the entire team including the John and Pat Hume Foundation for your expertise, commitment and passion in bringing this conference together in really such challenging circumstances. It's through events like these that we expand our network and partnerships, and I have no doubt that the conference will offer great scope for the sharing of research and best practice, and for the meeting of people and ideas. It is my hope that it will afford you all an exceptional opportunity for renewing old acquaintances, making new contacts, networking, and facilitating partnerships across national, international, and, of course, disciplinary borders. So best wishes to you all for an enjoyable and rewarding conference. Thank you. I would like to welcome you all to the American Conference for Irish Studies, taking place in my native city of Derry. I was born there in 1931. St Columba is the patron saint of Derry. His feast day is June the 8th. My husband, Brian Freel, used to phone his friends, Seamus Dean and Seamus Heaney, every year on that date to celebrate the occasion. Brian based one of his first plays on the life of St. Columba. It was first produced by the Abbey Theatre in Dublin in 1962. And at the end of that tour, at the end of that run, it transferred to Derry, it transferred to Derry for one night and played in St. Columba's Hall. The title of that play was The Enemy Within. Brian took that title from one of Senator Robert Kennedy's books, The Enemy Within, which was about corruption among the unions and Jimmy Hoffer, written in 1960. Senator Kennedy wrote at least 10 of the books. A few years later, Brian wrote a play, Philadelphia, Here I Come. This was produced very successfully in New York in 1965. Brian had a photograph in his study for a group at the opening night party. In it are Senator Kennedy and his wife Ethel and his sister Jean and the two lead actors in the play. Here it is, if you can see it. Okay. President Kennedy's son John played the title role in another of Brian's plays, Lovers. 
and a production at the Irish Arts Centre, Manhattan, in 1985. In 1970, Brian wrote, I would like to write a play that would capture the peculiar spiritual and indeed material flux that the country is in at the moment. I think that has to be done at a local parochial level and hopefully this will have meaning for other people in other countries. That was written 50 years ago. I hope that at last we are moving forward and that this conference will help us along that way. Stay safe and free. Hello, I'm Roma Downey, and I'm delighted to welcome you to the 2021 American Conference for Irish Studies taking place in my beloved home city of Derry. As a proud product of the Irish diaspora, this conference, focusing on the central themes of heritage, healing and home, will over the next few days touch on a range of subjects that are close to my heart. I have been shaped by my home and my heritage, and as a Derry native, I was a witness to the troubles which ravaged the city, particularly during my formative years of the 1970s and 80s. And that history has shaped my family identity and the values, traditions and culture that I'm handing on to my own daughter. Over the years, I've been delighted to travel home and see how the city has been transformed and restored. And as an honorary graduate, I'm happy to see how the university has also transformed I look forward to seeing its further transformation through the new School of Medicine and all the other new and exciting developments that are going on over there. I've always been inspired by a whole range of community activists throughout our city committed to creating a better home for a new generation of young people. And one of those pioneering community activists was John Hume a Nobel laureate and someone I'd known my whole life and was proud to call my friend. It's fitting that this conference celebrates his philosophy of healing and his steadfast commitment to peace and reconciliation at a time when the city will commemorate 1500 years since the birth of Colum Kill, broadly recognized as one of the most important evangelists in the early European Christian church. It also seems appropriate that a conference that explores all fields of Irish studies, including poetry and theatre, should take place in a city that was formative in the lives of literary giants such as Seamus Heaney and Brian Friel. And that tradition carries on to this day through the wonderful work of Lisa McGee, the creator of the hit TV show Dairy Girls, and the work of my fellow honorary graduate, Brona Gallagher. Their accomplishments are widely admired and put Derry on the world map. At this conference, we also celebrate the enduring links this city developed with America, where I now make my home. Given the diverse range of delegates attending this conference, those ties still clearly bind Ireland and America and have now been strengthened again with the election of the new president. President Biden can often be heard quoting Derry poet Seamus Heaney in his speeches. Let me take this opportunity to wish all of you the very best for the conference, and I hope that you find it not only enlightening and enriching, but most enjoyable as well. Thank you, and have a great time. On behalf of the Hume Foundation, it is a real privilege to welcome you here, albeit virtually, to Derry, for the American Conference for Irish Studies. While a virtual conference is never the same as being gathered here together in Derry, I'd like to acknowledge the creativity and hard work of the Chair, Professor Maliki O'Neill, and the Organising Committee, as well as all of the contributors for what looks like an outstanding programme. The three themes of heritage, healing and home in the anniversary of Column Kill 1500 have brought together a fascinating selection of papers, roundtable sessions, and what promises to be excellent keynote contributions. Scholars and speakers are coming together in this virtual dairy space from all over the world, including our neighboring island, which is how my father referred to the United States of America. My dad delighted in welcoming people to Derry, his home city of which he was rightfully proud. He would have relished the diverse contributions that make up such a program. The themes of heritage, healings and home were obviously close to his heart and formative to his work. 
I recently read an address he made to the Irish College of Physicians and Surgeons in the mid-1990s, where he said healing is what politics should be about. Just as no doctor welcomes disease or injury for the sake of it, no politician should welcome conflict. To do otherwise is to betray the, dist the trust of our fellow citizens put in us. For him, in his own words, the Good Friday Agreement was never a solution, but a framework for healing. The work of the Hume Foundation seeks to build on this framework, to continue to seek pathways towards healing in Ireland and beyond, through connection, through dialogue, and through critical examination of our histories. It is an honour to be participating with such a fantastic array of organisations, and I wish you all the very well for the coming days and for an excellent conference. Hi, I'm Lisa McGee and welcome to the 2021 National American Conference for Irish Studies taking place in my beloved hometown, Derry. As a proud Derry product, I'm delighted this conference is focusing on the themes of healing, heritage and home because they're all very close to my heart. My experiences of growing up in the city shaped me personally and it continues to inspire my work to this day. I'm thrilled to support the University of Ulster in hosting this event from the splendid McGee campus. I hope you all really enjoy it and wish you all well. Thank you. Greetings from Dublin. My name is Mary Heaney and I'm very glad to have been asked to speak briefly at this session of the American Conference of Irish Studies which is being held to commemorate the 1500th anniversary of Colin Kill, St. Colin Kill, one of the three patron saints of Ireland. It is so fitting that the conference is being hosted by the University of Ulster's McGee campus in Derry City, a place beloved by Colin Kill, where he founded his monastery and built his first church. The theme of the conference is heritage, healing and hope. As a northerner, I feel very close to the home element of the theme. I was born in County Tyrone, a neighbouring county to County Derry, and my husband Seamus was a Derry man. As regards the heritage theme, Colin Kill has left in his wake a rich store of legends. I have retold some of them in over Nine Waves, a book of Irish legends that I wrote and was published many years ago. Colin Kill came of royal heritage. There were high kings in both his maternal and paternal ancestry, though it was said of him that though he was a prince, he paid no heed to rank. He was a devout monk, a poet, a scribe, and it was said of him that he had the gift of prophecy. Colin Kill was given a piece of land by a royal cousin on which to establish a monastery. It was a low hill with river curling round it on both sides. Along the slopes of the site a beautiful oak wood flourished and gave the place its name Dilla, the Irish word for an oak tree, or Derry, as it's now known. Colum Kill loved his oak wood and would not allow it to be cleared even to build a church. Therefore, his first church was not facing due east as was the custom, because that would have entailed the cutting down of trees. He was a conservationist before his time. One legend about Colum Kill has a special relevance for writers and academics. He was responsible for what must have been one of the first ever judgments made about copyright. And this is how it came about. His old teacher, Finian, brought back from Rome a book of Psalms and Colin Kill wanted to copy it for himself. He was refused permission to do so, but he copied it anyway, at dead at night, secretly. This was discovered and he was asked to hand over his copy to Finian. He refused to do so. The two monks set off to meet the High King in Tara to ask him to arbitrate. The King's answer was, to every cow its calf, to every book its copy. And 
Colum Kill had to give Finlan the copy he had made. While he was still at Tara, the Hal King enraged Colum Kill even further by seizing a man who had sought sanctuary with Colum Kill, thereby breaking the sacred rules of sanctuary. Colum Kill went back to the north and mustered an army to fight the High King's followers. At Kuldrevna, a bloody battle ensued and thousands died. A remorseful Colum Kill went to a hermit to ask him how he could make reparation for the many deaths he had caused, and he was given a very severe penance. He was told to leave Ireland forever never to come back and to save as many souls among the Picts in Scotland as had died at the Battle of Cooldrevna. Colum Keel did what was commanded and with a few followers he sailed up the foil and on to Scotland. He established a monastery there on the island of Iona. But he never forgot Ireland and it was said that he wore Irish mould next to his feet. Here are a few lines from 11th, 12th century poem that are attributed to Colum Kill. This version is by Seamus Heaney. Towards Ireland a grey eye will look back but not see ever again the men of Ireland are her women. I'm going to end with another quotation from Seamus Heaney's translation of the Cure at Troy, relevant to the healing theme. These are words that will be familiar to many Americans because President Biden has spoken them on several occasions. History says don't hope on this side of the grave, but then once in a lifetime the longed for tidal wave of justice can rise up and hope and history rhyme. So hope for a great sea change on the far side of revenge Believe that a further shore is reachable from here. Believe in miracles and cures and healing wells. Thanks to the American Conference of Irish Studies and McGee College, we can all welcome Colin Kill back to his beloved Derry, back virtually like the rest of us. Warmest congratulations to everyone involved in this wonderful conference. I wish it every success.